morning worship at 10.30, and then our Christmas Eve service will be uh, at 7 p.m. Um, today's service is going to be a little bit different. It is Gifts for Baby Jesus, so we've got some different readings going on um, that Catherine and Sally are going to do for us. And, uh, and of course, we have our Advent candle lighting, and uh, and choir will be leading us uh, in some Christmas carol songs uh, during our special music. So, um, looking forward to that as well. Any other announcements that I need to mention before we go? If not, then um, get our our hearts and our minds focused on on Advent and that that gift of baby Jesus and enjoy the great that James can. shall return, and the cup to Zion will sing with everlasting joy on their heads. And they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow, and sighing shall flee away. Flee away. as a symbol of Christ our joy. May the joyful promise of your presence, O God, 
make us rejoice in our hope of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. I need complete instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Let's join in singing Light the Advent Candle. The first three verses. <laughs> shared on Facebook for our, our people and for the people of Gwynn. And I'll read it for you so that you can hear me. During the Advent season, December 3rd through December 24th, we at the Gwynn United Methodist Church celebrate the special arrival of our Savior Jesus Christ. This year, we are doing something a little different with the candles near the altar. During the first week of Advent, you probably noticed that the altar was adorned with two candles that have been on the altar throughout the year. During the first week of Advent, Don Tweedle also lit the first candle of Advent of the Advent wreath, representing hope. During the second week of Advent, Brian and Brenda lit the second candle of Advent of the Advent wreath, which represents peace. Those of you who follow our broadcast observe that near the altar, there is a candelabra that was placed with 14 unlit candles. The unlit candles represented the hope of yet to come, the light of the world, 
Jesus Christ. During the third week of the altar, which is right now, it was beautifully arranged by Vicki to include sculptures and the gathering of animals in the barnyard. Also during the third week, the joy candle was lit and only one half of the candelabra. We chose to light only one half of the candles to remind us that scripture found in Matthew chapter 25, that we need to be always prepared for our Savior. During the fourth week of Advent, we will light the love candle, remembering of the love that Christ offered to all, and remembering his commandment to love each other. Also during this week, we notice the empty manger that has been added to the barnyard, and all of the candles have been lit on the candelabra. The different lengths of candles also remind us that we all have different journeys in life, in our spiritual life and our faith in Jesus Christ. Finally, on Christmas Eve, we light the Christ candle, representing the birth of Christ into our needy world in a lonely manger. We also will observe with the placement of the babe in the manger. We invite you all to join us at 7 o'clock on Christmas Eve as Mark, our current pastor, serves the Gwyn United Methodist Church for his last time by lighting his candle from the Christ candle and sharing it with the light of his congregation. This act reminds us all to carry the light of the world into the darkness, no matter where we serve, no matter who we are. Merry Christmas from the Good United Methodist Church, and we invite you all to carry the light of the word into the new Thank you, Brian. I didn't, uh, I didn't mean for you to read that whole thing early. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. I was just, that's all right. That's great. Thank you. Um, and now, uh, if you are able, if we could rise for the call to worship, which is Psalm 126 on page 847 in your hand. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. And then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said, Among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May the most of so tears. Reaping the shouts of joy. Those who go forth weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bearing the seed. Amen. And our opening hymn for today is Sing We Now of Christmas on page 237.
may be seated. Uh, moving on to our joys and concerns. Um, I've got a few already written down. Uh, continued prayers for Catherine's dad and her family. Um, we thank you, uh, the Lord, that uh, Paul's uh, pacemaker got put in there successfully. And good to see you in here this morning, Paul. Um, the folks uh, alone for the holiday season, uh, and we'll also be praying uh, again for Dan uh, Hewitt, that the uh, Lord will place his hands on you and on his heart. Um, this is the joy of everybody that's here worshiping today, uh, and some safe travel. Um, a concern and a joy. Our daughter, Brianna, was in a car accident this week in Texas, but thankfully, other than being a little bit sore, she's okay. That, that was a concern and a joy together? Yeah, well, okay. it's alright. Sort of. I'll put an arrow for that part. <laughs> Judy? I got a, a sad phone call last night that um, a former member here lives down in Marshfield now. Shirley Spindler passed away rather unexpectedly. I guess she'd been sick for a couple of years. joy this morning. Um, Pastor Mark um, shared with me, I didn't know this, but he was going to Mill Creek and taking communion um, to the residents there over in, I don't know how many months, but over many months, and has brought joy to that community. So I just wanted to put that into prayers for joy. Right. And, and just so you all, Chuck and Catherine are going with me this month. Bunch of Christmas carols are going to take over there and take you in and sing to the folks over there. So, thank you for doing that this week. This one is fun. Today, yeah. and um, Catherine's 
voice is with us today. Not quite. Not quite, but she's speaking, so I'm thinking singing is coming soon. <laughs> That's what I'm praying for. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, we come to we work our way through Advent and we work our way through this season and we approach Christmas that we are looking forward to so much and we remember all the gifts you've given us. We put this baby in a manger that we keep talking about, this baby Jesus. When you, when you came yourself, to save us in the only way that, that you could save us. By coming in and going to the cross. Heavenly Father, for, for all the things that we thank you for on a daily basis, if we had nothing else, that would be all sufficient. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this season of the church that we remember that, that baby. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, to bless our worship here today. Fill this place with your spirit. Fill our hearts with love that we would remember well the, the lessons that Jesus taught us. Lord, we, we lift up some joys and concerns to you this morning. We continue to pray for Catherine's dad and, and all of her family. Uh, we ask, Lord, you continue to bless uh, her dad with healing, uh, strengthen his heart, um, and just show her health on Catherine and, and, and all of her family. We thank you, Lord, that Paul's pacemaker is in and is here with us this morning for worship. We ask the Lord to continue to uh, bless Paul with strength and healing. <coughs> we also lift up to you, Heavenly Father, all those that we know that are alone this time of year over the holidays. Heavenly Father, fill their hearts with joy uh, and spirit and, and, and bless the hearts of their loved ones and friends that they would go and make a visit. We lift up Dan to you, Heavenly Father, we ask you to continue to strengthen his heart and blessing of healing. We also thank you, Heavenly Father, that Brianna is okay. Uh, we, we, we are thankful that she wasn't hurt uh, badly, and we just uh, ask the Lord to continue to bless her with some peace and rest. We also lift up a sister that has gone home to be with you, Lord, uh, Shirley. Uh, we ask you, Lord, to place your, your hands of love and healing uh, on her family as they come together. Uh, and celebrate her life. We lift up going to you, Heavenly Father. We thank you that he's made it through uh, his, his uh, first round of chemo. Uh, we ask the Lord to continue to strengthen Boyne and, and bless him with healing. And all of those, Heavenly Father, who are dealing with cancer and going through the treatments, Lord, we just lift them up to you all uh, for, for rest and peace. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for uh, those folks out there in Mill Creek who are taking care of uh, Gloria and Claire and, uh, and all the folks out there that uh, that many of us know. Uh, we thank you for the, the talents and skills that, that the caregivers have out there. Um, thank you for Chuck and Captain and all those who are uh, praying and playing and, uh, and going to uh, lift up their spirits during Christmas. We, uh, we thank you, Heavenly Father, that, that David uh, made it through a, uh, a deer accident. We ask you, Lord, that uh, we thank you that he's here and he's okay. I uh, ask you, Lord, for uh, quick repairs on his vehicle. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all of our truck drivers out there, um, especially those that are out uh, busy with all the extra deliveries uh, during the holiday season. We ask you, Lord, that they have safe travels and uh, Will they bring joy to folks during the holidays? Lord, we also
also thank you for everyone who's here worshiping today. Uh, we thank you that everybody made the trip out. And uh, again, Lord, we just ask that you would bless our time here together and bless our time after church um, where we enjoy some, some food and fellowship. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that Don is here with us this morning. Uh, we'd ask you, Lord, to, uh, to bless Don as he travels back to Green Bay, uh, whenever that's going to be, and to keep Billy safe. Uh, while she travels down the state. We thank you that Gail is here, Heavenly Father, uh, and, and recovering from her pneumonia. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for that blessed healing. And we also thank you that, that Catherine's voice is coming back, uh, that voice that does so much singing here in our church. It's such a blessing. Heavenly Father, we also come before you, as always, with those unspoken prayers on our hearts, those prayers that we only share with you. You know what they are. You know they trouble us. And we just ask you, Lord, to strengthen us with the faith that we need to know that we can lay everything in your hands, in your spirit, in your way, and in your time, and to your glory. And hear us also, Heavenly Father, as we pray the prayer of Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. We do not stop the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now if we can make our offerings to the Lord.
until Christ comes again in final victory. And in his name we pray. Amen. a book that Max Lucado read. Quote. Once there was a man whose life was one of misery. The days were cloudy and the nights were long. Henry didn't want to be unhappy, but he was. With the passing of time, his life had changed. His children had grown, the neighborhood was different, the city seemed harsher, he was unhappy. He decided to ask his minister what was wrong. Am I unhappy because of some sin I've committed? Yes, the wise pastor replied. <coughs> you have sinned. And what might that sin be? Henry asked. Ignorance, came the reply. The sin of ignorance. One of your neighbors is the Messiah in disguise. And you have not seen him. The old man left the office stunned. The Messiah is one of my neighbors? He began to think who it might be. Tom, the butcher. No, too lazy. Mary, my cousin down the street. Too frightful. Aaron, the paper boy. Oh, self-indulgent. The man was confounded, confused. Every person he knew had defects. But some Messiah, he began to look for him. He began to notice things he hadn't seen before. The grocer carried sacks to the cars of the older ladies. Maybe he's the Messiah? The officer at the corner always had a smile for the kids. Could it be? And the young couple who moved next door, how kind they are to their cat. Maybe one of them. With time, he saw things in people he'd never seen, and with time, his outlook began to change. The bounce returned to his step. His eyes took on a friendly sparkle. When others spoke, he listened. After all, he might be listening to the Messiah. When anyone asked for help, he responded. This might be the Messiah needing assistance. The change in attitude was so significant that someone asked him why he was so happy. I don't know, he asked. All I know is that things changed when I started to look for God. Now that is curious indeed. The old man saw Jesus because he didn't know what he looked like. The people in Jesus' day missed him because they thought they did. How are things looking in our neighborhood? Our epistle reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, <coughs> verses 16 through 24. <clears throat> this translation is the New Living Translation. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies, but test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen, for he who calls you is faithful.
Good morning, everybody. We're waiting a little bit for Judy while she gets the microphone ready. Today, we're going to share a gift of voice to baby Jesus. The four or five of us, six of us, whatever there are here, are going to sing four of our favorite carols. The first carol that we would like you to join us, we want all of you to join us in all of it, would be Heart the Herald, Angels <coughs> Sing. It's listed on number 240 in your red hymnal. Again, number 240 in your red hymnal. And we're going to be singing the first and last verses of all of our songs. <coughs> page for six. Yeah. <clears throat>
And I told him I do this one because this one always reminds me of playing at Christmas time with Max. <laughs> so uh, this song is um, Angels We Have Heard on High, number 238. First and last first. First and last first. Oh, first and last first. That's what the <laughs> Was to serve the portion. 
everybody who knows some, some Christmas songs, that'd be great. Um, and everybody sounded great this morning, so. <laughs> Uh, our gospel reading for this morning is from the first chapter of John, uh, verses 1 through 18. If you are able, to will try to read it. <laughs> In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was in the light of man. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There came a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, he came to testify about the light. There was the true light, which coming into the world enlightens every man. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified about him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. For of his fullness we have all received a grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten God who is in the bosom of the Father, He has explained it. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let's talk. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. As I had mentioned uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, as we continue uh, our journey uh, through Advent, um, that this Sunday, the third Sunday in Advent, again, focuses usually on, and I say usually, focuses usually on the ministry of John the Baptist. And if I only focused on the verses in uh, John chapter 1, that are prescribed in the, the lectionary, which are verses uh, 6 and 8, 19 and through 28. They kind of break it up. Uh, and if I had read just those verses, then that's exactly what you would have heard. Um, you would have heard about John the Baptist. But there's, there's so much more. Um, to hear in those first verses of John's Gospel that actually do reflect on the story of Christmas. Um, and because of that, I, I really I just expanded that reading that we're covering. I just went through from verses 1 to 18 straight to it. Um, and that's really just to say, instead of breaking the chapter up and skipping over the scriptures uh, that the lectionary would have me go uh, straight through. In other words, let God's word speak for itself. If we let God's word speak for itself, I think we get a much better picture as to how these verses of Scripture in John point us towards the story of Christmas. 
we do see uh, in the opening of uh, John's Gospel um, that 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 mystery of Christmas, where the Creator of the universe becomes a child, comes to us as as a baby in, in a manger. Um, the fact that that this little baby born in Bethlehem is born of a virgin um, is astounding enough as it is. Um, but then understand that uh, that wasn't just any baby. That was that was God in the flesh, the Creator of the universe Himself uh, is also mind-boggling to say the least. Now, now God says in Isaiah that um, His His thoughts are higher than our thoughts, uh, and that um, His thinking is is uh, is higher than our thinking. Um, God understands. He understands the, the miracle of the virgin birth. To him, it just is. Um, all we can do is look at that event and say, wow. How, but wow. And certainly, just because we don't understand it, and even more importantly, the fact that so much of the world rejects it, um, it doesn't change the fact that it happened. So this morning, I want to take a look at uh, some of the theological things of Christmas. Um, I want to take a look at some facts to get us thinking about what happened in order to make Christmas happen. This, this little section of scripture in John that we're looking at uh, this morning, it tells us a bit about what went on from a theological point of view. Uh, the first major point from our reading is that he, Jesus Christ, brought forth the world. Uh, a lot of people don't actually look at it that way. Uh, but when you read verses 1 through 3, in the beginning was the Word, Jesus. And Jesus was with God. And I'm replacing the word word with Jesus' name. And Jesus was God. Jesus was in the beginning with God. And all things came into being through Jesus. And apart from Jesus, nothing came into being that has come into being. Um, and then we kind of shuffle on down here to verse 10. Jesus was in the world. And the world was made through Jesus, and the world did not know Jesus. These, these verses point out the who. The who that Christmas is all about. Jesus, the Word. They, they make it very clear that, that Jesus Christ is God. The verse 1 couldn't be any clearer than that. And really denying that um, is basically denying the fundamentals of Christianity. Um, Jesus, again and again through, throughout his uh, ministry, clearly proclaims his divine power and authority. I wanted to uh, also share quickly uh, a reading from Colossians chapter 1. Uh, just verses 15 through 17, where it says, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. So, so this little baby, uh, basically born in an animal shelter, needs to be fed, um, needs to be changed, needs to be cared for, is our Almighty Creator. Is, is God. And, and because of that outward appearance, the world rejects it. Does not recognize it. We have, we have to understand again that the, the Jews uh, of Jesus' day, we're looking for a Messiah that was going to kick rule out of Jerusalem. 
a, a conquering king. That's they had their mind set on. They weren't looking for the suffering servant uh, that they got. And also, you know, in Isaiah, he's prophesied to be the suffering servant, but it's just not what they want. However, you make no mistake that the next time he comes, there's not going to be any debate. The Bible says, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, above the earth and below it, that Jesus Christ is king. So the next time, it's not going to be the lowly born in a manger scene. It's going to be different. Um, going back and just looking at verses 10 and 11, I want to read verse 11 to you as well. Um, so he was in the world, the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. Verse 11 says, he came to his own, the Jews, and those who were his own did not receive him. But then it goes on to verse 12 and says, but as many as received him, that includes the Gentiles, but to as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God even to those who believe in his name. And then shooting down to verse 14. And the world, in the word, became flesh. This is the incarnation of Christ. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. So these verses, they point out the the ones. They point out the what of Christmas, the, the function of Christmas. You know, when you look back at, at how things were uh, in the Old Testament, um, like in the book of Exodus and, and, and all the rest of the, the law, you know, when God commanded his people, you know, build a tabernacle um, so they'd have a place to worship and they could, they could, and God filled the tabernacle with his presence um, because I guess. A pillar of smoke and fire wasn't good enough. They needed something more. So, so he has them build the tabernacle. But this time, this time it's going to be different. Now God's presence is going to be in the form of a man. A man that, according to Philippians chapter 2, gets rid of that, that deity and then takes on the the, the, the image of a bond servant. And, uh, you know, God chose to bring his presence in the form of something that we can relate to. A human. And, and he didn't have to do all that. You know, he could have just let things go as they were. And, and no one would have known any better until the final judgment. Then we would have had an idol way. But but to God, we are worth it. We are absolutely worth it. Every one of his children is worth it. And again, the world did not recognize its creator. The world rejected him. Um, you know, they said, we don't need you, Jesus. We've got the law. We've got the Torah. We don't, we don't need We've got the temple. And, and we have the same kind of cries of rejection today. Um, we have much of the world that says, we don't need you, Jesus. We have knowledge. We've got knowledge. We've got enlightenment. We've got freedom. We've got tolerance. We've got pluralism. We don't need you telling us that you're the only way to God. That's what the world does today. Or I'll find my own way. That has... That has got to break God's heart to hear his own creation say it. And, and I'm pretty sure that, that the reason that, that people choose to reject the God of the Bible is because if they, if they admit that this is true, then they also have to admit that they're responsible for knowing him, because there it is, and obeying him. It, it isn't an issue of faith for a lot of people, it's more of a, an issue of their will. 
so they choose not to believe. Because then they can avoid being responsible, or so they think. It doesn't really work. And they'll find that out in the end. But. Uh, all right, so let's look at uh, the salvation factor, um, which would be the, the why. We've got the who, we've got the what, what's the why of Christmas? Um, the salvation. Jesus came to bring hope and an eternal life to a world that rejects him ever since the beginning of time. Uh, our passage shows us a number of things dealing with salvation. Uh, in, in verse 4, um, in him was life. Eternal life. Uh, John later says in chapter 3 that, that Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save it. He gives eternal life to all who believe. Uh, verses 4 and 5, uh, they, they speak of his, of his light. Um, in him was life, and the light was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And, and again, we hear uh, John kind of pursues that same line of thought even farther in, uh, in verse uh, chapter 3, sorry, uh, when he says, This is the judgment that the light has come into the world. And men love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. But Christ came to shine the light of truth and life. We have to remember that, that Jesus came to fulfill the law. Okay? You know, up, up to the arrival of Christ, people only had the law to look to. That's what they had. If they wanted to please God, they had to obey the law. What they didn't realize is that the law doesn't make, and, and, and the same thing happens today uh, with, with the Jewish nation. Um, they, they don't realize that the, the law doesn't make you righteous. It merely sheds light on your sin. It, the law, you, you look at the law like a mirror. It just points out our sin to us. But it can't take sin away. We need Jesus for that. Why? Because he fulfilled the law. That's what Jesus accomplished on this earth. That's, that's the why that he came. Creator, the creator of our universe becomes a child. And, and in doing so, he, he sets in motion our salvation. That's, that's the miracle of Christmas. And, and you wouldn't think that the creator would have to do that. But he did. But he did. He bought us with his own blood. That's how special you are to him. And, and I've said it before and, and I'll say it again. You can still do it even if you were the only person left on the planet. You can still come and go to the cross for it because each and every one of us are worthy. Let us bow our heads. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, as always, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word that refreshes us, it renews us, it strengthens us, and it teaches. Let us rest in the only knowledge that we need, and that is that you, our Creator, came in the person of Jesus on that Christmas day so many years ago redeem us because you love us and for that we are eternally thankful in Jesus name Amen
goes the distance. And Christ traveled from limitless eternity to be confined by time in order to become one of us. He didn't have to. He could have given up. Any step along the way, he could have called it quits. When he saw the size of the wound, he could have stopped. When he saw how tiny his hand would be, how soft his voice would be, how hungry his tummy would be, he could have stopped. At the first whiff of the stinky stable? At the first gust of cold air? The first time he scraped his knee or blew his nose or tasted burnt bagels? He could have turned and walked out. But he didn't. He didn't because he is love. Would you join us in singing our closing hymn, Love Came Down at Christmas?
Plugged in. Tree. 